Zimbabwe, or was Rhodesia at the time, in Harare, the capital city. I do remember my dad being on the farm, the Zimbabwe bush war going on. It was a time where if the alarm at night went off, I had to grab my sister out of bed. We'd have to leopard crawl across the floor into my dad's room, and then he would be there on this like agric alert system, calling him and rifle at his side saying, you know, we're still alive, we're fine. And that was a, you know, ha could happen several times a night. It ended when I was seven, um, and that school teacher was the person who broke the news to us in the classroom that day. And I still remember her to this day walking past the windows and seeing her face so red with fear. And all of us sort of waiting to hear. We sort of we knew who was supposed to be the president that we wanted, and then it was Mugabe. And so this was the sort of fearful announcement that came to us little seven-year-old girls and really I have no idea. <laughs> of course we didn't understand what it meant other than it was important. So I was really young and it's, it's really you know tidbits of conversation that I've put this picture together that I might have but it, um, Zimb Rhodesia was a British colony and uh, you know it was time I guess for it to be taken back by the African people who had settled there originally and so that was what was driving the war was land and, and ownership and the whites were the minority and so that's what precipitated the war um, and then Mugabe was much better I think than anybody expected when he came into power he's a very educated man he um, you know continued on a very very uh, good path in bringing everybody together. There wasn't apartheid in Zimbabwe the way there was in South Africa. So you didn't have the race sort of hatred between black and white. There wasn't the segregation. There wasn't all of that. You had a very educated um, majority. You know, the school systems in Zimbabwe were all British. Everyone's English was fantastic. It was the breadbasket of Africa, highly productive from an agricultural standpoint. And so you didn't have that, that undercurrent that you experience to this day in South Africa, unfortunately. So I think that's why the unity was, was much easier and the transition much more peaceful until recent times, unfortunately. It's so important to me as an African that people experience my home the way I would. I'm not just selling a destination. It's my home and I I'm very proud of it. And a lot of the South Africans that work in this industry and, and beyond South Africa are very proud too. So it's an important thing to be sure of, of what products we're putting on the table. And so then my team are able to pick and make those decisions and design their own trips now. When I go with clients on safari who've never been before, and I can see it bring them to tears in a way that I often forget in my day-to-day -day job, and I realize how important it is for people to have the emotional weight that a safari brings with it. Because without that, we can't care about saving our wildlife. And so the more people I can see go through that, the more I know we're having an effect. <laughs>